Number 10. Liopleurodon One of the most terrifying monsters from the Jurassic period was the Liopleurodon. But exactly how terrifying this monster really was is under debate. Its size has been greatly exaggerated and greatly contested between experts. The dinosaur was first featured in a BBC programme titled Walking with Dinosaurs, which first aired back in 1999. In the programme, it was grossly exaggerated as being over 80 feet long. While some scientists do concede that it could be upwards of 50 feet, a more accurate representation would place this sea beast at being around 30 feet. The Liopleurodon was a type of marine reptile known as a pliosaur. It would have had a very short neck, an elongated head, and super long flippers. Basically, it looked kind of like a torpedo with flippers. There were many different types of pliosaurs in the Jurassic period, and they were distributed all over the world, just like modern sharks. And yes, the Liopleurodon was an apex predator. Part of this was because it was a super fast swimmer, again like modern sharks. Imagine a shark mixed with a lizard and a T-Rex. This was kind of what a Liopleurodon looked like. Number 9. Bacillosaurus The first thing you need to know about the Bacillosaurus is that it was not properly named. When this ancient creature was first discovered, the researchers believed it was a marine reptile, and so they named it Bacillosaurus, which translates to King Lizard. However, after further review, it turned out that the undersea monster was actually a mammalian. There was a proposed name change. Researchers wanted to name it Zooglodon, which would translate to yolk teeth. However, because the name was already registered, it could not be changed. In any case, you probably want to hear about how ferocious this beast really was. The average size of the Bacillosaurus was about 60 feet in length, that's a lot bigger than any modern day shark. It was one of the earliest whales that ever swam in the ocean, even though it was descended from terrestrial mammals. This is one of the only ancient animals that gives us a direct glimpse into the way it evolved. Its front flippers still had elbow joints at the time of its extinction. This is something that is only glimpsed today in seals. This means its flippers would have at one point been legs. Just like fish can evolve out of the sea, land animals can evolve into the ocean. It's believed that this dinosaur primarily ate smaller whales and big fish. Because of its massive size, it wasn't often eaten as prey. There wasn't much that could challenge it. Number 8. The Sea Scorpion This one should probably be number 1 on the list. I can't think of anything more terrifying than a sea scorpion the size of an adult human. That's right, somewhere around 460 million years ago, there was a giant sea scorpion swimming around in the waters that covered present-day Iowa. According to Life Science, the giant scorpions likely fed on squishy, eel-like creatures. They weren't really scorpions, but they sure looked like it. The prehistoric sea scorpions were more closely related to modern spiders and horseshoe crabs. But that doesn't make them any less unnerving. Just imagine something half lobster, quarter spider and quarter crab grabbing you by the legs while you're trying to go for a swim. The approximate size of the sea scorpions was somewhere around 5.6 feet long. If nothing else, it was definitely a strange animal. It had special rear legs that worked as paddles, and it had a second and third pair of limbs which were used for grabbing prey. Then, it also had three additional pairs of limbs in the back which were used for scrambling across the ocean floor. Basically, it could swim using paddles, run using legs, and pinch you with its long front arms. The sea scorpion fossils were discovered at the bottom of a meteorite crater, a massive scar on the planet that would have formed about 470 million years ago during a meteor event. There were over 150 fossil fragments discovered at this site, including the man-sized sea scorpions. And now for number 7. But first, remember to let me know which creature you think is the scariest in the comments below, and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on more videos like these. Number 7. Mauisaurus the Mauisaurus is a type of plesiosaur that lived around 77 million years ago in the late Cretaceous period. Its main home would have been around what is now New Zealand. In its day, it was the largest plesiosaur in the world and perhaps the biggest marine reptile in the waters around New Zealand. There have been lots of specimens uncovered and one thing the Mauisaurus is well known for is its incredibly long neck. It's like an underwater giraffe. It was about 26 feet long, had a slender body, and was able to move smoothly through the water using its two sets of giant flippers. Researchers also believe the Marisaurus, which was a hungry carnivore with sharp teeth for ripping apart fish and squid, could have probably ventured onto the shore for brief amounts of time. All the remains of the Marisaurus have been found near the South Island of New Zealand, near the city of Canterbury. If you need proof of how vicious this prehistoric sea monster was, look no further than the Marisaurus fossil that was found in the middle of a battle with a Mosasaur, another terrifying predator from the Cretaceous period. The name Marisaurus comes from the Maori demigod Mao, 
who according to the legend pulled New Zealand out of the water by using a giant fishing hook. Number 6. Kronosaurus The Kronosaurus was another plesiosaur from the Cretaceous period, just like the Marisaurus. Except the Kronosaurus was bigger, meaner and far more terrifying. It lived in the same waters as the Marisaurus, but a few million years earlier. It grew to be about 40 feet in length, with a skull alone that was over 12 feet long. Imagine a creature with a skull over twice your own height. It could literally open its mouth and swallow you whole. It lived from about 250 million years ago to 80 million years ago, and by the end of its reign had spread throughout quite a bit of the ocean. How did this ferocious marine reptile get its name? It comes from the Greek titan Kronos, so Kronosaurus. It was discovered in 1899, but was not fully understood until just recently. It wasn't until an almost complete Kronosaurus skeleton was discovered in Colombia that experts really began piecing together the puzzle of this extraordinary animal's life. The Kronosaurus had a primary diet of turtles and other plesiosaurs. Because of its ridiculously large size, it was kind of the boss of the ocean in its day. There is some evidence that suggests giant squids could have lived in the same area as Kronosaurus, and it could have eaten them as snacks, but there is no direct evidence. Still, it's pretty impressive if the Kronosaurus could have taken down giant squids. Number 5. Dunkleosteus It's time to meet the giant armoured placoderm, known as the Dunkleosteus. The name means dunkless bone, which is a mix of the paleontologist's name who described the fossils, David Dunkel, and the Greek word for bone. This prehistoric monster may not be as large or ferocious as the Megalodon, but it's definitely just as terrifying. It lived in the late Devonian period, around 382 million years ago and was distributed largely throughout North America, Europe and Morocco. The most famous specimens came from northern Ohio. What makes the Dunkleosteus so terrifying? It's all in the jaws. The Dunkleosteus was completely toothless, but it had armoured jaw plates that were even better than teeth. It was like having extremely sharp gums, like two perfectly formed chopping blades. In fact, it's kind of like the Dunkleosteus had a bear trap for jaws. The bottom jaw had a slicing edge and a cusp at the front that looks like a kind of fang, but there were no actual teeth. With such an incredible jaw structure, it's no surprise that Dunkleosteus was able to bite with around 21,000 pounds of force per square inch. This means it could chomp through bone and meat like nobody's business. It had roughly the same biting force as the giant crocodile, but that's not the only thing that made this carnivore so terrifying. It was also huge. The Dunkleosteus was the largest fish in the Devonian period at around 26 feet in length. It also wore armour. Not only were its jaws formed from armour plating, but it had a similar armour material around its skull, making it kind of like a battering ram. Number 4. The Real Leviathan In the oceans of today, killer whales work in teams to take down other whales and prey much larger than themselves. But 12 million years ago, there was a much larger predator feasting on the different whales of the ocean. It was a very real leviathan, properly named Leviathan Melvilli. Its name came from the biblical sea monster, the Leviathan, and the author of Moby Dick. It was a massive sperm whale that was only recently discovered near Peru. And while it was around the same size as a modern sperm whale, growing to be about 65 feet in length, it was actually much more dangerous. The sperm whale of today has no functioning teeth in its upper jaws, with only some smaller teeth in its lower jaws which it primarily uses for fighting. A typical sperm whale feeds using suction, relying on a giant rush of water to sweep fish directly into its mouth. However, the prehistoric leviathan had a mouth full of razor sharp teeth, with some of them being up to one foot in length. Rather than suck in its food, the leviathan would use its enormous teeth to bite and tear, just like modern killer whales do, only it had a skull three times bigger than a killer whale. The leviathan was definitely at the top of the food chain. Modern sperm whales tend to eat only squid, but researchers believe the leviathan used its massive teeth to chomp down on its own kind, eating any whale it could find. Interestingly enough, this giant whale lived at the same time as the mighty megalodon. 12 million years ago, these two ferocious beasts would have been competing to see who could eat more medium-sized whales. Number 3. Elasmosaurus The Elasmosaurus was one of the biggest plesiosaurs that ever lived. We have a few different plesiosaurs on the list today, and the Elasmosaurus lands right at the top in terms of size. This massive creature was like a brontosaurus underwater. It grew to be around 50 feet in length, and had an incredibly long neck, just like a brontosaurus. Like other plesiosaurs, this marine reptile originated in the late Triassic period and kept on all the way until the big extinction. It could weigh upwards of 50 tonnes. The very first Elasmosaurus fossil was discovered just after the Civil War by a military doctor in Kansas. 
If you're wondering how such an enormous sea creature could have ended up in Kansas, which doesn't have a drop of water anywhere near it, keep in mind that millions of years ago the American West was completely covered with water all the way until the late Cretaceous period. What's really incredible about the Elasmosaurus is its very long neck, which contained 71 vertebrae. That's about 11 more than any other plesiosaur discovered. In terms of actual ferocity, you have to imagine that anything 50 feet in length swimming through the ocean with a ridiculously long neck and a mouthful of sharp teeth is going to be pretty scary. In fact, this is kind of like the original Loch Ness Monster. It looks exactly like any artist's rendering of the Loch Ness Monster, especially with its enormous neck sticking out of the water. It makes you wonder if there isn't somehow a prehistoric Elasmosaurus floating around in Scotland somewhere. Number 2. Titanoboa We have some pretty frightening snakes on Earth today. However, in the tropical lowlands of northern Colombia, about 60 miles away from the Caribbean coast, the remains of a prehistoric monster snake have been found. It's been called Titanoboa, and researchers believe it would have been around 40 feet in length. The area in which this fossil was found was once a swampy jungle full of incredible animals, like giant turtles, massive crocodiles, and lungfish three times the size of their modern Amazonian cousins. This ancient swamp would have been ruled by the giant Titanoboa serpent. It would have looked something like your typical boa constrictor, only it was way bigger and way thicker. Anacondas and boas can grow to be pretty long, but they aren't that thick. The Titanoboa was about as thick as a human person. Just imagine that for a second. A snake that has a body larger than you that could stretch along two city blocks and slither through the slime and shallows of the swamp. That is not a jungle I would ever want to venture inside of. According to the Smithsonian, Titanoboa was the largest snake to have ever lived on the planet. Number 1. Spinosaurus If you ask anyone about the most terrifying sea monsters ever, they talk about Plesiosaurs, the Megalodon and Kronosaurus. But nobody ever talks about the largest carnivorous dinosaur that's ever lived. No, it's not a fish or marine reptile, it's the terrifying Spinosaurus, bigger than the Tyrannosaurus and the Gigantosaurus. And although it didn't dive down to the bottom of the ocean or use flippers to propel itself in the water, it actually could swim. Keep in mind that most dinosaurs, just like the Spinosaurus, were basically giant lizards. In fact, Spinosaurus basically means spine lizard. According to a report by Live Science, new fossil evidence is pointing to the fact that Spinosaurus may have been the first dinosaur to swim and hunt in the water. Researchers are going as far as to say that the most fearsome creatures who have ever walked the Earth spent most of its life in the water. This belief is based on the fact that Spinosaurus had short hind limbs kind of like early whales and other animals that spent significant time in the water. It had dense and compact bones just like penguins. And it had wide and flat feet that it could have used for paddling. Then there is its long and slender jaw which would have been perfect for catching fish. So, the next time you look at a T-Rex or a Spinosaurus, remember these giant lizards could swim and weren't afraid of slithering into the ocean to hunt for food. Which prehistoric beast would win in a fight against the Megalodon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Number 10. Giant Mekong Catfish The deepest part of the ocean has all types of terrifying wildlife. You'll need to be careful not to become a tasty snack for some of them. Some of these animals are tiny, while others are so large you wouldn't even take the edge off their gigantic appetite if they caught you. Sometime in May 2005, Fishermen in Thailand caught a giant fish along the Mekong River. It weighed 646 pounds, that's 300 kilograms, and was 9.8 feet long, that's 3 meters. The Guinness Book of Records reported it as the largest freshwater fish ever found. But the Mekong isn't just any fish, it's a catfish and a giant one at that. Greyish white, plain and without stripes, the Mekong monster fish has a low eye set that makes it look pitiful. But beware of this creature. It's different from other catfish species because it's got no teeth or whiskers. The giant Mekong catfish feed on zooplankton, which are organisms that live in oceans, seas and freshwater bodies. What's fascinating about this fish is its growth rate. The Mekong grows faster than all the fishes in the world. It can grow up to 440 pounds or 200 kilograms within 6 years. It also lives as long as 60 years. Isn't that incredible? Mekong catfish live in a vast expanse of river and are only able to survive in a particular climactic condition. Unfortunately, their numbers have dropped by 90% over the past decades. One primary reason for their decline is overfishing. Countries like Thailand have banned the harvest of Mekong so that it won't go extinct. Even at that, it's still illegally caught and sold in some restaurants. Don't eat the giant catfish!
I personally would love a giant catfish as a pet if I had anywhere to keep one. What about you? Would you keep one of these big boys? You'd need a pretty big backyard with a giant pond. Let me know how you feel about the idea in the comments section below. And while you're doing that, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 9. Frilled Shark When you see this sea animal, the first question you have to ask is, does this fish still exist? The answer is yes. The frilled shark is known as the snake fish of the deep. They are on one hand fascinating and on the other terrifying. Frilled sharks have existed for millions of years, but they live far away from humans. First discovered between 1879 and 1881 in Japan by Ludwig Dodelein, a German scientist, they have been inspiring nightmares ever since. They live in the deepest, darkest parts of the ocean and look like a mutated type of sea dinosaur. They have long, smooth, slimy bodies, about 5 feet long, that's 1.5 meters. These sharks move very strangely and awkwardly in the water. Instead of swimming straight like other fishes, the frilled shark moves slowly and curls its body like a snake. Unlike other sharks, their mouths are at the end of their snouts. With more than 300 sharp teeth facing backwards, they can easily latch on, catch and kill prey. Number 8. Argentavis magnificens Have you ever seen a bird as big as a Cessna aircraft? Over 4 million years ago, the skies above Argentina were flooded with scary birds known as Argentavis magnificens. The bird, also known as the giant pteratorn or monster bird, is one of the largest birds ever found. They look like vultures, but bigger than any bird alive today. It's possible that a human could even ride on these creatures, if they'd let you on their back. The Argentavis magnificens are extinct predator species discovered in central and northwestern Argentina. They weighed 240 pounds, that's 70 kilograms, and had a wingspan of 22 feet, or 7 meters. The upper arm bone of this bird was slightly shorter than a human's arm. Argentavis had short but strong legs. Its enormous feet allowed it to walk easily. The bird flew by soaring with its wings, flapping at intervals and gliding for most of their flight. The skeletal structure of the breast muscle wasn't strong enough for extensive wing flapping. Thus, they must have used uneven sloping ground with small peaks and cliffs as a takeoff point. This is very similar to the biggest birds of prey that live today, such as the condor. None of them flap their wings too hard. They prefer to glide on their wide wings and use the wind as their assistant, rather than go crazy like hummingbirds or insects. This is another animal I'd love to have as a pet, if I could be sure it wouldn't try to eat me. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 7. Paracerithium Paracerithium was a large herbivore with a long neck that looks like a hornless rhinoceros, or an elephant without a trunk. It's also popularly known as Indricotherium, and looks like a huge horse, but it's more than twice the size of even the largest modern-day horse. These animals inhabited locations like China, India, Kazakhstan, and Pakistan during a time period known as the Oligocene. That is between 34 and 23 million years ago, after the dinosaurs went extinct, but still many millions of years before humans came around. Though the exact size of this mammal isn't known, the shoulder height was about 16 feet, that's 5.5 meters. With a length of about 26 feet or 8 meters, it was one of the longest land animals that ever lived. Its massive weight made it easy to hunt down, though not many animals could take on a full-grown paracerithium. An adult paracerithium weighed about 33,000 to 44,000 pounds, which meant it could crush just about anything by sitting on it. It had a long neck that made it possible to feed on tall plants, with a skull that was about 4.3 feet long. It also had very long legs that looked like pillars. Standing beside it, you would almost feel like you were standing in a temple. Now this is a creature I would absolutely love to have as a pet if I could find somewhere with big enough fences to keep it in. Number 6. Megatherium Americanum Sloths today are not even 3 feet tall, but there once lived sloths that were the size of elephants. Megatherium Americanum was the most massive ground sloth ever, living from 5 million years ago to as recently as 12,000 years ago. That means that early humans did in fact encounter these savage beasts, and probably even hunted them for food. The name means a great beast of America. Megatherium looked like a modern elephant with large claws and teeth. It weighed 4.4 tons. That's about 4,000 kilograms and almost 9,000 pounds. It measured up to 6 meters or 20 feet in length from head to tail. This giant mammal had a robust skeleton with a broad, muscular tail and large pelvic girdle. Because it was large, it could feed at heights other herbivores couldn't reach. Megatherium had enough strength to support its massive weight while pulling down branches with its forelegs. It could stand on its hind legs while feeding, 
while its tail helps it maintain balance. Megatherium lived in woodlands and grassland areas of South America. Although it walked in groups, the mammal lived alone in caves. In the south, they existed until around 10,500 BC. According to archaeological records, human hunters sadly pushed this mammal towards extinction. 12,000 years ago, Megatherium became extinct when the Quaternary Extinction event took place at the end of the last major ice age. This event claims most of the large animals that existed in the New World, and set the stage for humanity to become the most dominant animal on the planet. Number 5. Mastodon In 1739, a Dutch farmer discovered the first remnant of a large extinct animal in Claverack Village, New York. This animal had a very heavy tooth, and was named the Mastodon. Related to mammoths, mastodons were prehistoric animals that existed in North America over 10 million years ago, and up to their extinction 11,000 years ago. They mostly lived in the forest. They were very similar in appearance to modern day elephants. They had shorter legs and longer bodies combined with hefty muscles. The average body of a mastodon was around 10 to 13 feet or 3 to 4 meters in height from the shoulders. They weighed between 2 and 3 tons, that's 4,000 to 6,000 kilograms. The females were more similar to today's elephants than the males. They had long skulls with long curved tusks, while the male tusks were curvier and stronger. Mastodons socialized in groups. Adult females and the young bonded in groups known as mixed herds. Usually, the males left the females when they grew up to full maturity and lived alone or among male groups. Mastodons were browsing animals because they fed on leaves, soft shoots or fruits of shrubs. Some theories say the heavyweight animals went into extinction due to climate change, while others claim it was due to humans hunting them down. At the end of the last ice age was an extreme shakeup for the species of the world, and many of the biggest animals we know about went extinct during this period. Number 4. Glyptodon Can you remember how a tortoise looks? Now, think about a giant tortoise with an armoured tail and shell-like covering over its back. That's the Glyptodon. This armoured animal was roughly the same size and shape as a Volkswagen Beetle car. The Glyptodon lived during the Pleistocene Epoch, between 2.5 million and 11,000 years ago. Related to the armadillos, it had a round shape and short limbs. The animal had tiny bones fixated on its underside, limbs and face. It also moved slowly like a tortoise. And, unsurprisingly, it too was a South American native species, with fossils of it being found in countries like Argentina and Brazil. The name Glyptodon means grooved or carved tooth. Shortly after the Ice Age, around 10,000 years ago, Glyptodons, like many megafauna of the time, went into extinction. Why? Most likely, it's because early humans could easily hunt them because they moved at a slow pace. Apart from the meat they provided, their large shells could have been used to shelter early South American settlers from the snow, rain and sun. Number 3. Mammoth These prehistoric mammals were around 2.6 million years ago, and lasted until 11,700 years ago. They usually had long, curved tusks. Some possessed a covering of long hair. Various species of mammoths lived in Africa, Europe, Asia and North America. Mammoths had a vast body. The largest species were around 13 feet or 4 meters in height from the shoulder and weighed anywhere from 8 to as much as 12 tons. Male and female mammoths possessed tusks which appeared at about 6 months after birth. Like human milk teeth growing into permanent teeth, the old tusks grew into permanent tusks at 18 months. The last species of mammoths that walked the face of the earth was the woolly mammoths. Most died during the megafauna mass extinction at the end of the Pleistocene. Although there has been no particular explanation for their total disappearance, records say they ceased to exist due to climate conditions that occurred before the mass extinction. But it's likely that human hunting played a role as well. Large, slow-moving animals like the woolly mammoth were basically perfect for a hungry tribe of cavemen in the cold winter months. A tiny subspecies survived on the remote Wrangell Island in the Arctic until as recently as 3,000 years ago. Then, it too died, leaving us with only fossils of these incredible creatures. What do you think of the wave of extinctions that took place around 12,000 years ago? Were they from early humans hunting? Was it a climate change effect? Would you like to see these species brought back like in Jurassic Park? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 2. Giant Golden Crowned Flying Fox Giant creatures that we can still find in the world aren't only land or sea animals. Some are creatures of the air. The flying fox, also known as the golden-capped fruit bat, is a rare species of megabat indigenous to the Philippines. It has very long wings that can wrap around its body like a cloak. These wings measure about 5 feet wide or 1.5 meters if in full display and weigh about 2.5 pounds. That's about a kilogram. 
The golden brown flying fox isn't actually a fox, but it's considered the largest bat ever to exist. People call this animal a fox because its face and snout look like the sly creature. Unlike the round-shaped ears of most bats, this creature has pointed ears, earning them the name fox with wings. The flying fox isn't blind like most bats. It's got excellent eyesight that is 20 times better than that of humans. Flying foxes live in deep caves in remote rainforests, far away from humans. Usually, they move alongside river routes to find food easily. When on water, they scoop water with their wings and pour it all over their bodies. They don't mind travelling as far as 25 miles or 40 kilometres per night in search of food. But usually, they feed on fruits, figs and flowers. These bats are social creatures. They move in a colony to keep warm. Unfortunately, this social habit makes hunting them down very easy. Human hunters have tracked and killed quite a number of them. Flying foxes stand the chance of extinction since poachers in various locations always hunt them and humans continually destroy their forest habitation. This would terrify me if I saw one, but to be honest, it would probably be more scared of me. Number 1. Longhorn Beetle What comes to mind when you think of a beetle? A small, insignificant insect? How about an insect that's as big as your hand? Some people get terrified at the sight of a simple cockroach. What then will happen when they get to see this giant beetle wiggling around their house? This titan longhorn beetle can make your blood run cold. It lives in South America's wild Amazon rainforest, most notably Brazil, Colombia and Peru. Titan longhorns are prodigious beetles that are almost 7 inches or 16 centimeters long. They have sharp mandibles that can cut pencils in half. Though they're usually not aggressive, they defend themselves with their sharp spines and strong jaws. You can imagine what would happen if you got bitten by this beetle. So, you'd better not mess with this insect. Titan larvae feed on decaying wood below the Earth's surface. When they grow up, they don't eat anything and only spend a few weeks as adults. No wonder they emit pheromones and fly around in search of mates in adulthood. They want to reproduce quickly and bring children into the world before the end of their lives. Incidentally, Titan longhorn beetles are also attracted to electric lights. This is not great for their survival chances, but even worse is the danger they face from the periodic destruction of the forest habitat by timber companies. Like most of the biggest animals, the biggest danger for these creatures is us. Number 8. Sugar Glider With a name like this, you know for a fact that they have to be absolutely beautiful. As a member of the kangaroo and koala bear family, the sugar glider is a small marsupial that comes from the rainforests of Australia and Indonesia. They have been bred as pets in the United States for the last 15 years and got their name from their love of eating sweet fruits and vegetables. They also have a gliding membrane that is similar to a flying squirrel that stretches from their wrist to their ankles and allows them to glide from tree to tree. With the lifespan that is similar to a dog or cat, sugar gliders can also learn their own names and do tricks. Although some people like to compare them to rodents, such as mice, hamsters and gerbils, sugar gliders are not rodents and do not instinctively need to chew on things, making them a tidier pet. They are also known to strongly and permanently bond to their human families and can go almost anywhere with you in public without being in a cage. Some sugar glider owners have even been known to carry them around on their shoulders or in their pockets. When they are babies, they are called joeys, like kangaroos, and only measure about the size of a grain of rice when they are born. They spend the first few weeks of their lives in their mother's pouch and grow to be about 5 to 7 inches long, not including their tail. In the wild, they live in colonies of 10 to 15 other gliders, but when they bond to a family, they usually pick a favourite person as their primary bond. If you like pocket-sized pets that look unique, maybe a sugar glider is for you. Would you like to have your very own sugar glider as a pet? It seems like a way cooler and friendlier animal than a gerbil or guinea pig to me. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Number 7. Box Turtles If you don't think a box turtle can be cute, you're sorely mistaken. These guys are beautiful. Native to the United States and Mexico, there are four species of box turtles. They are recognisable from their domed shell, which they use for protection. These little armoured tanks can retract their arms, legs and head, then close their shell tightly to keep predators at bay. Common box turtles are the most well-known of the species, and include various subspecies including the Eastern Box Turtle, the Mexican Box Turtle, and the Yucatan Box Turtle. The Aquatic Box Turtle is the only known aquatic box turtle in North America, and can be found in one small area, in Coahuila, Mexico. Popular as pets, they need exposure to real or artificial light to stay healthy. Their main source of food is invertebrates, like insects and worms, but they'll also eat a lot of vegetable matter including leaves, fruits and berries. A relatively docile species, they are quite exotic looking with some coming in brilliant colours and designs. Most are safe to pick up and do not bite humans, 
However, they do not like to be handled too much and can sometimes be a bit of a challenge to take care of. Still very much a wild animal, box turtles need a tank or enclosure that simulates their natural wild environment to keep them healthy. In the wild, most box turtles share a deep connection to where they were born and do not travel far from it. One of the problems that occurs is when people take box turtles from the wild, domesticate them as pets, then release them somewhere else. Sadly, because these box turtles often wander aimlessly trying to find their original home, they usually die. They also tend to have a short lifespan in captivity because of the strong connection to where they were born. If you do decide to adopt a box turtle as a pet, you should also be careful not to keep them in an enclosure where they can see out of the glass because they do not understand the concept of it and will endlessly push against the invisible wall which can cause them undue stress. However, by providing them with a proper habitat that is as close to their natural habitat as possible, box turtles can be a rewarding addition to your family. Number 6. Kinkajou These cute little animals might be difficult to pronounce, but they are as adorable as their unique name. Found in the tropical forests of Central and South America, Kinkajous have similar features to primates, but they are actually related to the raccoon. Sometimes called honey bears because they eat beehives, Kinkajous use their long, skinny tongues to drink honey from beehives and remove insects like termites from their nests with ease. They also eat food and small mammals which they capture with their sharp claws, mostly roaming and eating at night and returning to holes in trees to sleep during the day. Known to form treetop groups for social interaction and reciprocal grooming, kinkajous are a vocal animal. Even though they are seldom seen, there is no mistaking their call, which includes screeching and barking from the tropical forest canopy. Although babies are born with their eyes shut and they cannot see for a month, by the second month of their life they are able to hang upside down from their tails. With a lifespan from 20 to 25 years, they weigh from 4 to 8 pounds and reach maturity at 18 to 20 months. Native to lowland rainforests of Central and South America, they can also be found from eastern and southern Mexico through Belize and as far south as Ecuador and southern Brazil. Directly related to the red panda, kinkajous have a small round head, small ears, sharp teeth, a long body and thick brown fur. They use their long tails to balance and although they have a keen sense of touch and smell, they have poor vision. They also play an important role in the ecology of tropical rainforests by dispersing many different kinds of seeds and pollinating plants as they move through the treetops. Able to live from 20 to 25 years, their main predators include the fox, the jaguar, ocelots and even humans who hunt them for their meat and fur. Although many wildlife experts do not think it's a good idea to keep them as pets, many people do so, even though it requires a large cage for them to live comfortably. You would need to make significant changes to your house, or even build a giant greenhouse to be their playroom if you ever wanted to own one of these. But they are so cute, it might just be worth it. What do you think? Tell me in the comments below. And while you're there, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Crested Gecko Crested geckos are a reptile found in a very lush, remote island chain east of Australia called New Caledonia. Named for the small projections on their heads and above their eyes, the species was thought to be extinct until they were rediscovered in 1994. They were so successful in captivity that they are one of the most widely kept geckos today. Ranging from brown and cream to blacks, oranges, reds and whites, some crested geckos have no pattern, while others have spots or stripes. The more they are bred in captivity, the more colours and pattern combinations you will find. Although you may consider getting multiple crested geckos and keeping them in a single tank or even terrarium, they can be extremely territorial and aggressive towards one another, with juveniles often fighting and seriously hurting their nearby rivals. An arboreal species, crested geckos like wood branches, vines, plants and other subtropical features in their tanks. And they aren't too picky about temperature either. They don't need special heating or lighting, but they do need to stay well hydrated so they can shed their skin. Growing to between 7 and 9 inches in length, including their tail, they have been known to lose their tail in the wild when they are threatened. Some also lose their tail in captivity, but if this happens to your pet, don't worry, they can still thrive without them. Isn't that fascinating? Number 4. Chinchilla Why go for the typical gerbil or hamster when looking for a rodent as a pet when you can have a chinchilla? Prized for their luxuriously soft fur, unfortunately, chinchillas were nearly driven to extinction because of the demand. But if you want to give a helping hand to this small, furry creature, chinchillas end up making great pets. Related to guinea pigs and porcupines, they have short front legs and long muscular hind legs that resemble rabbits. With shorter round ears, they also have large black eyes and bushy tails. Covered in thick fur, they can live in elevations of 3 to 5,000 meters in the Andes at temperatures as low as 20 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 5 Celsius. A nocturnal animal, they sleep during the day by making their homes in underground tunnels or nesting in rock crevices. They sometimes even live in colonies of hundreds of chinchillas. 
an omnivore that eats both plants and meat, they eat mostly grass and seeds, but also sometimes insects and bird eggs. They hold their food in their front paws to nibble, which is probably one of the many reasons people find them so endearing. If you decide to have multiple chinchillas, you should keep them in separate cages and give them baths once or twice per week in fine volcanic ash. Unless you live near an active volcano, you'll probably have to buy that from the store. Smarter than rabbits, they make for a very hyperactive pet, so you might want to think twice before you adopt one of these furry rodents into your home. Or just make sure you're prepared for the rambunctious little creatures. In exchange, you can have the softest animal in the world running around your house. Do you think it's worth the trade? Let me know in the comments below. Number 3. Serval With a long neck, very long legs and very large ears on a small skull, the serval is a unique breed of cat. With a pale yellow coat and black markings consisting of large spots, long stripes or smaller spots that give them a speckled look, the serval is a striking animal. Found in over 34 African nations, they mostly reside in national parks and reserves. They tend to congregate in long grass savannas with plenty of water and reed beds with other river vegetation. They have also sometimes been found in the dense forests along waterways. A nocturnal hunter, they usually rest during the day in abandoned aardvark burrows or under shady bushes. They are excellent climbers and have been known to retreat to the treetops when they are in danger. For the most part though, they are a solitary and territorial animal. Although they do have long legs, they don't use them for fast chases and instead use them to lift themselves up. They also use their long fingers to dig in burrows and mole tunnels and will often sit nearby, listening to the animal's movements underground so they can capture them the moment they surface. Not much bigger than a medium-sized dog, servals retain their wild instincts even when domesticated. They are truly difficult to contain in a home or enclosure and need to be able to learn how to hunt to survive. They are also known to leap into the air to catch flying birds or to slap fish hard enough to stun them. But sadly, servals are not easily house trained and tend to have poor health when kept as a pet. Considered an exotic pet, most municipalities frown upon keeping them in captivity and instead encourage people to remember that the best way to see these types of animals is in the wild. They may be cute, but it might be best to view them from afar. Unless you have enough room for them to run around freely, that is. If you have enough land, you could probably let them roam and play as much as they want. You'll need some serious real estate for that though. Number 2. Pygmy Marmoset Another potential pet that some may frown upon keeping in captivity is the pygmy marmoset. Small enough to fit around one's finger, they tend to measure 5 to 6 inches long, or 12 to 14 centimeters, and weigh a mere 3.5 ounces. That's 100 grams. Known to feed on tree sap using their sharp teeth to gnaw at the bark, these tiny pygmy marmoset can jump 16 feet in the air, an amazing feat for such a tiny critter. Females are known to usually give birth to twins, with the entire family nurturing them. Their small sizes won them some cute nicknames, such as Pocket Monkey, Little Lion and Dwarf Monkey. Of course, they are the smallest of all the monkeys and one of the very smallest primates in the world. Communication is one of their strongest social aspects and they use their voice to call, warn of danger and encourage their young using clicking sounds and loud calls to talk. With no more than 12 members in any group of pygmy marmosets, they tend to enjoy bonding, spending their free time with one another and are even known to show sadness when one of the members dies. Sometimes aggressive and known to fight to their own death if they have to defend themselves, the pygmy marmoset is a unique creature found in Colombia, Brazil, Ecuador and parts of Bolivia. Living most of their lives in trees, they are rarely found on the ground, so if you decide to take one as a pet, you will have to provide them with nests and branches and foliage to make them feel at home. Unfortunately, it's illegal to keep them as pets in many areas, so unless you file for a permit as an exotic animal sanctuary or own a zoo, these thumb-sized monkeys may be pets you can only dream about having as your own. Number 1. Fennec Fox The smallest fox in the world is the Fennec Fox and is easily identified by its rather large ears. Measuring in at no more than 16 inches or 40 centimeters, the animals have a thick sandy colored coat that keeps them warm at night and reflects the sun during the day. Although humans are not a natural predator of the fennec fox, unfortunately sometimes malicious poachers trap these animals and sell them into the pet trade or hunt them for their fur. Another animal with a nocturnal nature, they live in deserts and semi-arid habitats in the Sahara and throughout northern Africa. Because of their cute appearance, the fennec fox is often illegally taken as a pet, which actually keeps them from being an endangered species. But just because there are no major threats to their populations, it doesn't mean that they aren't misused. In fact, many are in danger from being trapped, hunted or sold commercially. For many of these exotic animals, the debate remains. Is it better to take them into your home for the prestige of having a unique pet? You could try to be the best pet owner in the world, but it still wouldn't be natural. Would it be better to let them live their lives in the wild where they would have free reign to thrive? 
They would be in danger from predators, but they would still live their lives as nature intended. Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 8. Kangaroo Fight A recent video captured two kangaroos duking it out animal to animal in the middle of an Australian suburb. We all know that Australia has some of the most outrageous wildlife in the world, and kangaroos are up there for the most iconic Australian animal, but you'd never expect to go outside of your front door and catch a literal boxing match between two of them. However, Rodney Langham uploaded a video of the situation to YouTube, so we all know it's true. Take a look! Who knows how they ended up there, but it seems like they've had a serious disagreement. It's not pretty. They're both using their fists and their legs to settle their issues. As it turns out, kangaroos do this pretty often whenever they find themselves in competition with one another. There's a long history of kangaroos seen as boxers. It's arguably one of Australia's national symbols. In the late 19th and early 20th centuries, kangaroos occasionally used to box humans as a sideshow. Usually, kangaroos just box one another for territorial reasons, but it looks like this one got out of hand and flowed out into an area where you'd never expect to see it. Have you ever seen a kangaroo box before? Let me know in the comments below. Number 7. Okunoshima – Bunny Island On the tiny Japanese island of Okunoshima, there are a ton of feral bunnies that have long since taken over. While this is certainly adorable, the island itself has a history fraught with gloom. In 1925, a bunch of countries including Japan signed the Geneva Protocol. One aspect of this protocol banned using chemical weapons in war, even though countries could still make it. And the Bunny Island is where Japan decided to keep making their chemical weapons. Even though it was technically legal, they kept their development of mustard gas very secret, even though they created somewhere around 6 kilotons of this dangerous material. The island was often not listed on maps to keep this a secret. Even the local population didn't know what the new plant was making. But then after World War II, the Japanese decided that it was time to get rid of all these nasty chemicals. Sadly, there were many victims of chemical poisoning from the plant, and it took many years for their stories to be heard. However, after the plant closed, government officials freed many rabbits onto the island in the hopes of converting it into a park. Who knows if these were the test bunnies that were at the poison plant? Let's hope not. Since they were released, the rabbits have moved forward like they tend to, by multiplying. If you're interested in the history of the island, you can visit the Poison Gas Museum, but many tourists just go to the island to experience the cuddliness of all the bunnies there. Number 6. Cape Town Baboons In Cape Town, South Africa, it could be argued that the baboons have started to take over. That's right, due to Cape Town's expansion into the baboons former territory, these animals have decided that they'd just move right into the city as it takes over their space. That means that there's a solid population of around 500 baboons inside of Cape Town that can cause a lot of trouble for the city's residents. The city even publishes a helpful list of tips and tricks for dealing with the baboons if you're a tourist. Naturally, these baboons would want to move into the city's living areas because there's a lot of discarded food inside of trash cans, as well as an abundance of fruit-bearing trees. They don't have many predators to deal with, so they've taken to rummaging through trash cans and breaking into businesses looking for snacks. Many know when the garbage trucks run and are ready to take what they can from the dump at a moment's notice. These burgling baboons are no joke, there's some serious looting going on. Due to all of these factors, the government has started to reconsider its protection of the animals, but it's not entirely clear what should be done. They've thought about whether or not to put down the repeat felons. Cape Town's population has taken to a different method. Paintballs and pepper spray. But clearly, this isn't going to be enough to stop the most determined of the baboons. Could you imagine trying to fight off attacking baboons with a paintball gun? That's just ridiculous, but it's real. Has a baboon ever tried to steal your garbage or food? What about bears or raccoons? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Number 5. Chesky Krumlov Castle Deep inside of the Czech Republic, there is a castle with a very unconventional security system. In the moat around the large structure, a group of brown bears hang out and make their home. The castle is called Chesky Krumlov Castle, and it's one of the oldest and biggest castles in the whole country. It's been around since the year 1240 when it was built by a branch of the influential Rosenberg family, after which it was passed down through the generations into the 16th century. That's when the bears entered the picture. After living there for many years, they started inhabiting the surrounding moat in about 1707. They're a fitting symbol for the castle, and different bears have come and gone as the years have passed. Right now, four bears have set up a place in the moat of the Chesky Krumlov Castle, they even have a comfortable living space, featuring such niceties as toys and relaxation areas. On Christmas Eve, the bears enjoy a celebration festival, and during this period, tourists are allowed to come inside the bears' space. Visitors tend to bring a lot of tasty treats for all the bears to munch on, and the local wildlife expert makes sure that it's all okay for the bears to eat. 
Then, when their buffet has been assembled, the bears are allowed to feast. However, sometimes that doesn't quite work, and unfortunately, some American tourists got mauled on one occasion. So be careful if you visit this castle, and keep your distance. Number 4. Koalas on deck We all know that koalas can't fly, unless we give them a helping hand. When Singapore was celebrating its 50th anniversary of being an independent state, Australia decided to present them with a gift. Four koalas, who went to live in the Singapore Zoo. They flew with the Qantas airline, which opted to give them a truly first-class treatment for a moment, giving them luxurious hot towels, as well as a hearty helping of eucalyptus. You can see photos of their flights for yourself. However, as it turns out, they only got their first-class treatment for a short amount of time. It's a pretty long flight from Australia to Singapore, and they spent most of it inside of crates. The photos are from a photo shoot. However, this is probably better for the koalas and the flight attendants in the long run, since they are wild animals. No one wanted any unexpected messes occurring on their way to their new home. The four koalas, named Idalia, Palita, Paddle and Shan, served as Australia's cultural ambassadors for a few months before moving to the zoo. Qantas even committed to sending these koalas a fresh helping of eucalyptus twice a week. Australia definitely knows how to represent itself around the world. Number 3. Coyote on a rooftop bar A few years ago, a few folks spotted what appeared to be a coyote on the top of a New York City rooftop bar. People weren't sure what to do. At first they thought it was a dog, but a veterinarian ascended to the rooftop to sneak a peek, and left just as quickly. And if you look at the photos, it looks more like a coyote than a dog. For a few short hours, this coyote was flying high directly in the middle of the neighborhood. Naturally, people were concerned about the coyote's presence on the roof, so the NYPD's emergency services unit was called in to capture it. However, this coyote was pretty nimble. When they tried to snatch it, this coyote ran from the rooftop directly into an old factory through one of its windows. You can actually see a video of it for yourself. Take a look! The bar's owner suspects that this animal had been living in that factory for quite some time, and perhaps it's still there today. This isn't the first time that coyotes have been spotted in New York City. In fact, two more were recently captured and released back into designated Bronx wilderness areas in the same year. Have you ever encountered a wild animal in an office or home before? Tell me about it in the comments section below. Number 2. Pig Beach We've all dreamt about swimming with dolphins, but have you ever considered that it might be more fun to swim with pigs? It might sound ridiculous, but on the small island of Big Major K in the Bahamas, you can make this dream a reality. If you ever visit Big Major K, you'll find that this island belongs to a group of feral pigs. Though some folks claim to have seen a couple of cats and goats on the island other than the pigs, it's basically uninhabited by anything or anyone else. You can go and see the aptly named Pig Beach if you're ever staying at the Fowl K Resort in the area. From there, you can rent boats and travel to Big Major K Island for yourself. The pigs live off the natural food sources from the island, but also on the goodwill of those visitors who come to feed them regularly. When the pigs hear the boats approaching, they prepare themselves by swimming out to meet you there, so you can get out and swim with the pigs. Not only that, but if you start approaching the shoreline, the pigs are probably going to jump onto your boat looking for a snack. It's a remarkable place, but no one is quite sure how the pigs arrived there. Some say that sailors left them there to come back and eat later, and then never made it back. Others say that they are the lone survivors of a shipwreck. Although we'll probably never know how these pigs got there, I think it would be a lot of fun to go swimming with them. After all, that's not something you see every day. Number 1. Sea Lion in High School In April 2015, onlookers outside of an Imperial Beach, San Diego High School must have been stunned to see a sea lion pup being taken away in a police car. It's fun to imagine what the sea lion must have done to end up in this situation. Did he want to go back to school? Was he trying to locate an old friend? The possibilities are endless. Whatever he was up to, he might have gotten away with it too, if it weren't for those police officers apprehending him. I went looking for more information, because this story sounds crazy. So what happened? Well, Mar Vista High School is only five blocks away from the Imperial Beach shoreline. So what must have happened is that this pup came onto the shore and flopped itself a solid five blocks to this high school. Naturally, the staff at Mar Vista were a little bit confused, so they thought that they should get the police involved. After they detained the determined pup, animal control officers arrived and cared for the animal. While it's a funny story, there is a real problem at hand. Sea lions washing ashore has become a serious problem in the past few decades, and no one is quite sure how to stop it. Because waters are getting warmer, mothers are leaving their pups alone while they swim deeper into the water to find them food. These pups are sometimes forced to come ashore because it's the only place they have the energy to go. Soon, places like San Diego are going to need animal control to take in orphaned sea lions more and more often, which could develop into a real problem for the wild population. Number 10. Goonch Catfish There are a lot of pretty creepy fish crawling around in the lakes, rivers and oceans of our world. 
and one notoriously creepy fish is the Goonch Catfish. This thing is an ugly monster that can get up to 6.6 .6 feet long and weigh up to 400 pounds, and an enormous one was recently caught in the Ramganga River in northern India. This particular creepy Goonch Catfish is unique for its size, as a local news report claims it could have been the biggest catfish ever found inside a Himalayan river. But it never got to be weighed, as the villagers who caught this slippery catfish were too hungry and ate it before any kind of certification could be done. Or maybe they were just scared of it. This massive goonch catfish looks more like a shark or a whale than a fish. It's absolutely enormous. The villagers had to carry it back home tied to a massive pole. It took two men to carry it between them. The goonch catfish is pretty terrifying and appeared on an episode of River Monsters called Killer Catfish, Season 1, Episode 2. In this episode, Jeremy Wade investigated a series of freshwater attacks on people in the Kali River. Everyone thought this thing was to blame. It is rumoured to have developed a taste for human flesh after feeding on corpses thrown into the river after funeral ceremonies. However, it doesn't seem likely that this fish would make people disappear. I certainly wouldn't mess with this monster, but it probably made for one impressive fish fry. Let me know if you think this fish is dangerous in the comments below. Number 9. Siamese Carp A British man in Thailand recently caught the world's biggest and creepiest carp after an incredible 80 minute battle to get the fish from the water and into his arms. Just imagine wrestling with a fishing line for a full 80 minutes. It's one intense workout, especially dealing with Siamese carp, which are absolutely huge. Not to mention they are super creepy with their weird scales, stubby fins and bug eyes. This particular catch, however, is something of a miracle. As the biggest carp ever caught, it weighed an astounding 232 pounds. That's 105 kilograms. The carp was so heavy that they had to use special scales on a stainless steel tripod just to get a proper measurement. The man who caught the fish couldn't even hold it by himself. It took the help of two other people just to raise the carp out of the water to get a photograph. Siamese carp are the biggest species in the entire world, and they are found naturally in all kinds of river basins around Asia. And as the name implies, the Siamese carp is extremely common in Thailand. Just imagine finding this chunky fellow in your swimming pool. He looks big enough to take down a human, and if he had managed to drag the fisherman into the water, there's no doubt who would have won that struggle. Number 8. Two-mouthed trout. Of course, everyone wants to see the most bizarre mutant fish. The fish we're talking about now is a two-mouthed trout caught in New York, but it's not the only one of its kind. There have been several reports in recent years of mutant trout being caught with two jaws instead of one. This newest incident, as reported by The Independent, was as recent as 2019. And yes, there are lots of theories swirling around about this bizarre fish. It was hooked out on Lake Champlain in Plattsburgh, New York, and the photos of the fish show that it has a normal mouth, but then a secondary jaw underneath that doesn't appear to be fully formed. But it definitely has two mouths. The woman who caught the fish believes that the secondary mouth could have been caused by an injury, very likely from another fisherman. However, there are lots of other interesting theories. Some people say it could have been a mutation, it could have been a birth defect, or it could have been caused by pollution. Other people believe it could have something to do with the sea monster that is believed to live in Lake Champlain, although the fish only weighed about 6 pounds, or 3 kilograms, so it's not much of a sea monster. According to an expert doctor and fish researcher at London's Natural History Museum, this trout is actually pretty normal. Apparently, all fish have a set of gill arches behind their jaws. The doctor believes that this fish either suffered from a birth defect or an injury that caused the skin and muscle that would normally cover that portion of his body to be lost, and therefore the skeletal structure was exposed and it looked just like a second mouth. I prefer to think of it as a radioactive mutant. Maybe another one will be discovered with extra fins or even claws. Yikes! What do you think about these mutant fish? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss on the next videos. Number 7. Fish with Lips if you've ever been interested in kissing a fish on a dare, this is going to be some good news for you. A recent catch out of Malaysia shows a bizarre fish with lips that are weirdly human. And yes, it even has teeth that look extremely human. In fact, everything about the mouth of this fish is human. It could kiss you and bite you at the same time. If that's not the creepiest thing you've ever seen on a fish, well, I don't know what fish you're looking at. And while a lot of people were claiming the photo to be edited after it rose online in 2020, it is 100% real. This type of fish is actually known as a trigger fish, and there are about 40 different kinds of them according to National Geographic. The biggest fish is the stone trigger fish, and it can grow to be around 3.5 feet or 1 meter long. They are typically found in the eastern Pacific and live at the bottom of the ocean, sucking out crabs and worms from the bottom of the sea with their weird lips. The fish's weird teeth are actually used to bite apart sea urchins and eat them. 
The specific fish in this photo is most likely a black patch triggerfish, and it's a pretty well-known species around the Great Barrier Reef, which does include Malaysia, the area the fish was caught. I still wouldn't get near that face. Too creepy. Number 6. Human Face Fish Another very human-like fish was caught creeping out tourists in a Chinese lake last year. The video of the human-faced fish made it online in 2019, and it was apparently taken by a visitor outside of the city of Kunming in southern China. The video clearly shows a creature with a fish's body and the face of a person. There is literally no other way you can possibly interpret the fish. It looks like a bald man's frowning face, like something terrifying out of a horror movie. The woman who actually films the video of the fish can be heard screaming in the background that the fish turned into a fairy. Of course, fairies don't exist, and there is definitely not a fish with a human face. It's really just a weird looking carp with bizarre features that makes it look a lot like a human faced fish. According to the sun, it's not the only one of its kind. In 2009, a carp with a human face was discovered in South Korea, and in 2010, another carp with a human face was sold for over $40,000. In 2016, a third carp with a human face was caught in the Hunan province of China by a primary school teacher who instead of eating the fish decided to keep it in his home. Could this be the next step in evolution or just a weird coincidence? You be the judge. Number 5. Creepy Octopus Thing A creepy octopus fish has been reeled in near Coney Island, New York. This is a classic example of a mysterious deep sea fish being unexpectedly caught by a fisherman. Many people have pulled out bizarre things over the years, but this one is really strange. It looks like a monster from an alien movie, or like a baby kraken that somehow got too close to the surface. It appears to have three tentacle legs, a weird fat head that almost looks like an octopus, and basically no bones. But it's probably not really that mysterious. The fish is most likely a clear-nosed skatefish, which is closely related to a stingray. It could just be that its wings are tucked underneath its body and don't protrude at all. In the video where the fish is flopping around on the boards and looking a lot like an alien, it's highly likely that the fish is just suffering and misshapen because it's not in the water where it's supposed to be. Underwater, this fish would be floating flat over the bottom just like a stingray. On land, it looks like a weird malformed sea monster. Number 4. Bearded Fireworm A fisherman in Texas has caught one of the strangest worms that you will ever see in your life. It's known as a bearded fireworm, and it's not only creepy, it's super poisonous. As the story goes, the woman was at the pier in Port Isabel when she reeled in her line. At first, she thought she had gotten seaweeds tangled on her hook, but after a closer look, she realised it was a creepy worm. The worm was covered in bristles and coloured bright red. Luckily, the woman who reeled in the bizarre worm was smart enough to recognise the bright colours and not touch it. If she had, the fireworm could have given her an extremely painful sting. Fireworms spend most of their lives on the floor of the ocean and use their bristles to stab predators and inject them with powerful neurotoxin. A single sting will make you feel like you're on fire, and the sensation can last for hours. These creepy worms hide under rocks in the daytime and then come out at night to eat the remains of already dead sea animals. As far as creepy things go, these worms are up there. Great, now we all have another thing to fear stepping on when we go for a swim at the beach. Number 3. Alien Fish it's not a typo, a fish that looks just like an alien has been caught in Norway. While some people are saying this fish resembles a creepy prehistoric sea monster, others think it looks like a weird alien fish. It was caught by a young Norwegian fisherman back in 2019 off the island of Andoya in Norway. The man who caught the fish was working as a sports fishing guide and was trying to catch blue halibut when he instead caught the creepiest fish of his life. According to him, it took about 30 minutes to reel in the fish, that was because his line was around 2,600 feet deep. The fish that he caught was slimy, it had eyes that were way too big for its body, and it looked like an overgrown tadpole. But the specimen is not actually an alien, of course. It is, however, prehistoric. The fish is known as a ratfish, and it's a relative of the shark dating back to around 300 million years ago. The fish eats crustaceans and is pretty non-threatening, living deep in the ocean. According to the man who caught the fish, it tastes great. The way it looks just turns me off from ever trying it though. I could never eat an alien. Number 2. Mississippi's Fishzilla There's an invasive and super creepy fish plaguing the waterways of Mississippi, and it's being called the Fishzilla. Recent catches of the so-called Fishzilla, also known as the Northern Snakehead Fish, are beginning to freak out fishermen in the area along the Mississippi. The snakehead fish is not an indigenous species, and the fact that these fish are appearing in bigger and bigger numbers is very disturbing, since they have the potential to wipe out much of the local species and disrupt the ecosystem. Apparently, these fish first came to the region as pets in people's homes, but over the years, they have been let out into the wild and now they are growing in numbers. 
The reason they are so creepy is because they can crawl out onto the land and survive on the shore. They look a lot like snakes. A northern snakehead can even slime its way across land like a big fat snake. Fish living on land, making their way across the lakes and rivers of the world and preying on the helpless native populations? Sounds like Fishzilla is a pretty smart nickname after all. Number 1. Toothy Fish This number one candidate for the creepiest fish looks like an American relative of the famous piranha. It was caught in Oklahoma waters by an 11 year old girl. Just like with the northern snakehead, this is an invasive species that has no business being anywhere near Oklahoma. The fish is a paku, and they typically belong in South America. However, people illegally dump them into the lakes and they slowly begin to thrive as apex predators. This particular creepy catch has teeth that are way too human for anyone to feel comfortable with. Opening up this thing's mouth reveals jagged teeth, all bumpy and weird like the fish hasn't brushed them for 30 years. But I'm sure he wouldn't hesitate to make any of us into a snack. I'll be watching very carefully before I set foot in any body of water again. From gigantic trees that have seen it all, to jellyfish that can literally live forever, here are nine of the oldest living organisms in the world. Number 9. The Bristlecone Pine There's something a little awe-inspiring about looking at the oldest living single tree on the planet. Apple trees can live to be around 300 years old, and we have all seen massive redwood trees that look like they have seen many things over the centuries. They practically seem like wise beings. So, it should come as absolutely no surprise that in the dry white mountains of California, there stands the oldest living tree on our planet. It is the bristlecone pine, and it is a twisted and gnarled tree that mostly looks dead, but is actually still alive. And according to scientists, it has been alive for a stunning 4,841 years. It is also considered to be the oldest organism on the planet. That's right, this tree is nearly 5,000 years old. It began growing right around the time that Stonehenge was first being built. That means that in California, this tree was growing as humans journeyed into the Bronze Age, as the Egyptians built the pyramids, and as the Roman Empire spread across Europe and Africa. And even after the Roman Empire fell, the Black Plague spread through Europe. The civilizations of the Old World and the New World violently collided after 1492. The Industrial Revolution brought humans even greater power, and the Information Age spread our knowledge across the planet. This bristlecone pine still stands tall. It's actually not unusual for these trees to reach such an advanced age. According to the US Forest Service, trees like Methuselah, as this tree was affectionately named, are slow growing during the winter, making their wood resilient to disease. Unlike other plants, bristle cones do not deteriorate as they age. What an incredible tree! How much longer do you think this Methuselah giant will continue to stand alive and proud? Let me know in the comments section below, and while you're down there, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, if you like this video, show it some love and give it a thumbs up. Number 8. The Immortal Jellyfish It's time to meet an immortal sea creature. We already know that turtles can live an extremely long time, but there is one immortal jellyfish that may have found the ability to cheat death. This jellyfish is only 25mm in length, and its real name is Turritopsis dorni, which is quite the mouthful. In any case, this jellyfish has no heart, it has no brain, and it is basically just a tiny speck of living jelly floating through the oceans of our planet. However, some of these jellyfish may be very well the oldest organisms on Earth, according to the New York Times. Now keep in mind, it is kind of a cheat, but it's cheating death itself. You see, the jellyfish starts as an egg, which then morphs into a small polyp, a tiny organism that clings to something, usually a rock while it grows. Eventually, the jellyfish will grow big enough to become a free-floating jelly, with the typical bell shape and wriggling tentacles. While it may seem large in pictures, remember it is only 25mm long. Do you want to know the trick to its immortality? Well, when this jellyfish is stressed, it reverts. It gets rid of its tentacles and its bell, and it goes back to the infant version of itself, the original polyp. The polyp is identical genetically to the older jellyfish, but it is now a small jellyfish that will need to mature again. Basically, the jellyfish can revert into its younger self, mature to adulthood, revert to its younger self, mature to its adulthood, over and over for eternity. Of course, this only works if the jellyfish doesn't get eaten by a predator somewhere along the way. Scientists have discovered the trick to this animal's biological immortality, but sadly we can't yet make use of it ourselves. Regardless, it's impressive that there is a creature in this world, even a small one, that's actually cracked the code to eternal life. Number 7. Permian Bacteria 
250 million years before today, the Earth was a very different place. It was the time of the Permian era, full of strange and wonderful life forms. What marks this time period so well was the impressive Permian extinction, one of the great extinction events that wiped out almost 99% of life on the planet. In late 2000, scientists uncovered four unknown strains of bacteria that date back to this ancient time on Earth. They also managed to revive these strains of bacteria, bringing to life the oldest living organisms ever discovered on our planet. The bacteria had been lying dormant in a large cavern in New Mexico. The scientists actually had to collect rock samples to discover the bacteria spores locked inside. It took about three months to carefully culture the bacteria in extremely sterile conditions, but the scientists did eventually bring the four strains of bacteria back into existence. Depending on who you talk to, this is an extremely scary thought. There are lots of fears about scientists bringing back extinct bacteria, viruses and other nasty living organisms that could have a devastating effect on society as we know it now. This discovery was almost 20 years ago and scientists have been debating whether or not these bacteria are really as old as they first seemed. Now, it's unclear where the research will land on the facts of these ancient microorganisms. Researchers in Japan have claimed to revive their own prehistoric bacteria, and claims of different old microbes place them anywhere from 8 million to hundreds of millions of years old. Really, I don't care exactly how old these fossilized bacteria are. Just the thought of scientists doing this kind of zombie resurrection is terrifying. If these do cause illness in humans, it could be the end of our run here on Earth. What do you think? Should we even permit scientists to do this type of research? Let me know your opinion with a comment down below. Number 6. Bee Bacteria Let's talk about another microorganism that's been around the block for millions of years. Microbiologist Raoul Kano and his team of scientists were the first to ever successfully revive ancient bacteria. This is a little different from most other samples, as it was retrieved from ancient bees. That's right, 30 million years ago there were still bees buzzing around the planet, just as there are today. They might have been a little bigger than we're used to, but they did exist. You might not know this, but bees are actually some of the oldest insects in the world. And back in 1995, Raoul Kano and the rest of his scientists managed to extract bacteria spores from ancient bees they found encased in amber from the Dominican Republic. And yes, I thought the same thing. This is just like what happened in Jurassic Park. The only sad part is that it's currently still impossible to resurrect larger animals. However, this incredibly old and long dead organism was brought back to life. They discovered that the ancient bacteria inside of prehistoric bees are actually quite similar to the same microbes currently living in modern bees. It looks like some animals and some organisms simply don't change that much with the passing of time. But as for resurrecting the bees themselves from 25 million years ago, we are still a little short in the technology department. Maybe in a few years, but not today. Number 5. Volcano Sponge the volcano sponge is an extremely ancient living organism, and surprisingly, it's also classified as an animal. How is a sponge an animal? Well, it is an animal in the same way that coral and other marine life can be considered an animal. If it has predators, you bet it's an animal. This bizarre sponge is typically found off the McMurdo Shelf in Antarctica. It is believed to be about 15,000 years old, and it grows to be this old because of the extremely cold conditions that characterise its habitat far below the surface of the ocean. The sponge can grow to be about 6.5 feet or 2 metres in height, and they grow at an extremely deep point in the ocean where it's dark and frigid. Because of this, there is very little known about this ancient organism. What we do know is that the most common predator for the volcano sponge is a sea star. Sea stars can accumulate in hordes on a single sponge and slowly eat it until it dies. This may not be as exciting as a shark attacking a fish, but it is still a predatory strike and by some of the friendliest looking fish in the sea. It's also important to note that sponges grow at an extremely slow rate. It's basically unobservable in a human lifetime. And while volcano sponge can be attacked by sea stars, they also use their bodies to provide a home to many small worms, amphipods and isopods. Such weird and prehistoric creatures growing slowly in the depth of the ocean, the whole thing is eerie to me. Does it creep you out too? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Thousand Year Rose The world's oldest rose is some type of genetic freak. It simply didn't die with the coming of winter. No, it lived for many lifetimes and still thrives today in Germany. Talk about one resilient flower. This rose is believed to be at least 1000 years old and the oldest living rose on the planet. It's not the oldest organism in existence, but it's definitely a worthy addition to the list. It grows on the side of a partition on Germany's Hildesheim Cathedral in a secluded and calm area. 
Many people believe the flower was first planted in the early 800s at the founding of the church. By some miracle of nature, this hardy rose managed to creep up the side of the building for hundreds of years and it still continues to bud and bloom with each passing of the season. It produces pink flowers once a year in May. Is it a miracle? It just might be. Do you think it's blessed? Let me know your answer in a comment. Number 3. Li Jai Wan Grand Kinko King Another miraculous and ancient tree on the other side of the world makes all others pale in comparison. While the bristlecone pine in California might be the oldest living tree today, there is actually an ancient tree in a rural Chinese valley known as Li Jai Wan Grand Ginkgo King that is pretty close in ancientness. This tree dates back about 4,000 years and is known as the largest ginkgo tree in existence. The tree is shrouded in Chinese legend and it's actually famous because of one man who lived in the tree for an estimated two years. The man was supposedly a cattle farmer in the 1970s and decided to live in a massive hollow in the ginkgo tree. It was undoubtedly quite roomy, as the tree trunk is over 50 feet or 15 meters around. There is plenty of space in the hollow, which measures about 30 square feet or around 3 square meters. A tree with enough space inside for a human to set up a home, and one that has been living as a legend for thousands of years? I'd love to move in there for a few days, wouldn't you? Number 2. Pando Ancient Forest Anyone who has ever travelled to Utah is familiar with the quaking aspen. This is a pretty standard recognisable tree. It has white, peeling bark, very thin branches, and grows in dense groves of thousands. But there is one very old tree in Utah known as Pando. Though it is not just a single tree, this unique quaking aspen is a collection of 47,000 trees, more like a living, breathing organism connected by tangled roots than a single sprouting tree. And guess what? All 47,000 trees are clones. How can trees be clones, you wonder? Well, apparently this entire ancient forest was grown from a single seed. That one seed sprouted, grew a tree with healthy roots, and those roots spread throughout the grove. What happened next? Over the centuries, this growing organism sprouted about 47,000 trees that are still standing. The grove stretches over 106 acres. A group of researchers carried out studies on Earth and studied 72 years of photography in order to find out how Pando has changed during this time. The team discovered that grazing animals and human encroachment have caused a decline in Pando's well-being, for this possible reason, Pando has not been able to replace its aging trees and as a result has reduced in size over the past 50 years. While it is extremely difficult to pinpoint the exact age of the ancient forest, researchers believe it to be about 80,000 years old. Obviously, the original tree has long since fallen, but the clones are still part of that same seed, making this an extraordinarily old organism. This could be the most amazing demonstration of resilience life ever and we should do our best to protect it. If you ever want to see this giant old forest of clones yourself, make sure to visit it at the Fremont River Ranger District in the Fish Lake National Forest, located in Utah. Number 1. Honey Mushroom Fungus One of the oldest organisms on Earth might actually reside right beneath your feet. Not at the moment, of course, but it could be if you went for a hike exploring the gently rolling hills and babbling brooks of the Malheur National Forest in Oregon. It's one of the oldest organisms on Earth, and it extends for miles on the forest floor. This is a primordial giant, and it covers a whopping 4 square miles of land. That's about 1,665 football fields. And while it is typically unseen beneath the ground, each fall season the organism sprouts anew, once more revealing its ancient existence. This organism is a sprawling mushroom fungus. I learned that this hidden ancient giant is actually one example of a very common species of fungus known as honey mushrooms. The organism was discovered back in 1988, and it's more than just a single mushroom. It has fungal branches beneath the soil, which it has spread for thousands of years to create a kind of complex system of organic material beneath the soil. Scientists have actually proved that the fungus is genetically identical throughout its entire four square miles. Not only does this make it the largest known organism in the world, but it is also extremely old. Researchers estimate the sprawling fungus is anywhere from 2,400 years old to 8,000 years old. These aren't merely the harmless mushrooms you might expect. On the contrary, these mushrooms are known to kill the trees around them. Even at a distance of two feet from the roots of a nearby tree, you can find that this fungus has already rotted away all its roots. This is how the tree does not get enough nutrients and slowly dies. Now that's terrifying! Let me know something in the comments though. Did you know organisms of this size existed, and of this age? I knew trees and fungi could live hundreds of years, but not thousands. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this type of content, because there are always lots of amazing fact-filled videos coming out, and you won't want to miss them.
Now, which of these incredibly old organisms would you like to see with your own two eyes? Tell me in the comments below, and thank you for watching. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe while you're there. See you next time for another great video.